In this presentation, I'm going to discuss a very common rebuttal that you're likely to hear if you ever make a serious challenge to evolutionary theory. So if you expose a flaw in evolutionary theory that can't be answered, there's a good chance that you're going to be accused of the so-called God of the gaps fallacy. Now, let me explain what this means. An impossibility to evolution is presented, such as the origin of sexual reproduction. You present evidence that this is impossible through known laws of science. Therefore, the mystery is attributed to an intelligent cause. Now, this is argued to be a fallacy of logic because science will surely find the answer someday. For example, anciently, some primitive cultures attributed lightning to a mythical god that was angry. However, with an increasing understanding of laws of physics, that mythical god was eventually destroyed. Lightning can now be explained by materialistic causes. It's therefore argued that all phenomena in nature will eventually be understood within a paradigm of atheism. So in this manner, evolutionists often argue that God is being incrementally marginalized as science is progressively explaining mysteries in the context of atheistic evolution. The claim that science is closing in on all the gaps is utterly false. The gaps are getting bigger with increasing research. This is especially true in origin of life experiments and in molecular biology. Now, to anyone with a scientific mind, this is a ridiculous extrapolation. The explanation of lightning to a non-intelligent cause doesn't prove that the origin of life can be explained by a non-intelligent cause. This logic simply starts out with the assumption that the origin of every unknown complexity of the universe can be explained without a designing intelligence. It also assumes that if you can ascribe a materialistic cause to something, that God had nothing to do with it. So the entire theory of evolution is founded on a philosophical rejection of intelligent design. With atheism as a foundational assumption, I am accused of illogical thinking. I assume that because a mystery can't be answered, it must have been through intelligent design. Now I'm going to point out several embarrassing flaws with this logic. First. If I say that the origin of sexual reproduction is impossible through evolution, I'm disproving evolution. I'm not trying to prove an alternative hypothesis directly. And second, when a theory is being challenged, you can't appeal to its validity to counter a challenge. If I say that meiosis can't be explained through Darwinian mechanisms, the response is going to be God of the gaps. This presumes that a naturalistic explanation exists when I'm proving that it doesn't. I'm saying, look at the data. Evolution's impossible. They're saying you need to accept evolution because it's already been proven to be true. We just haven't figured out this minor detail yet. If there are any gaps in a theory, that theory is up for question. Science isn't about unwarranted extrapolation or hope. It's about proof obtained through rigorous skepticism. It's about relentless challenging of consensus to find any flaws. If one insurmountable flaw is found that cannot be refuted, the entire theory is false. Another fallacy of this logic is because the God of the gaps retort implies that evolution has answered most of the challenges and only a few minor details remain. It's implied that the evidence for evolution is so overwhelming that we can assume that every complexity will surely be solved with further research. Now, my friends, nothing could be further from the truth. It's proclaimed that evolution is supported by mountains of evidence, but it's never shown that it's supported by any compelling evidence. I recently perused a college-level biology textbook. It had introductory comments on evolution. It started out with the worn-out cliché, evolution is supported by overwhelming scientific evidence. Then, to explain what the evidence is, they cited antibiotic resistance in bacteria and selection of pre-existing alleles in insects. This was the best evidence that they could come up with. Watch this clip that I found on the internet. This is an attempt to explain how evolution works. It has over four and a half million views. The evolution of living things is powered by natural processes, things which can be studied and understood. Mm -mm. This video has been praised by thousands of viewers for its clear description of the process of evolution. The reason it's clear is because it's a misrepresentation of biologic reality. 
The fact that camouflaged insects survive more than insects that stand out is self-evident. This doesn't explain how a fish could become a land mammal. Sometimes these explanations are given with the implication that scientists are simply dumbing things down so that everyone can understand. If you really understand this, it'll be obvious. I hope you don't fall for this. This is the best example of natural selection that can be given. They have to stretch their imaginations just as much as you do. Now, the reasons these simplistic types of explanations are given is because this is all the evidence that's out there. If you examine any proposed pathway of evolution, such as the origin of higher intelligence, everything is based on imagination and gross oversimplification. The whole of evolutionary biology is one enormous void of knowledge. It's a massive house of cards built upon one imaginary story after another. If you're looking for specific answers, you're not going to find any. In the words of Franklin Harold, former professor of molecular biology and biochemistry, there are presently no detailed Darwinian accounts of the evolution of any biological or cellular system, only a variety of wishful speculations. If any of you doubt this, ask a biology professor for a detailed scientific explanation of any proposed evolutionary pathway. You won't get a straight answer. For example, ask for proof how the DNA of an ape could incrementally change to result in the complex integrated circuitry of a human brain. Or how do you explain the evolution of complex instincts through mutations and natural selection? If you press the issue, you'll be referred to a research paper or the subject will be changed. You might be told that an ape evolved into a human because the brain got larger. Or you'll be presented with a fragmented line of fossils to prove it. When the professor runs out of excuses, he'll accuse you of the God of the gaps fallacy. He always has that card in his hip pocket as a last resort. So remember, if you challenge someone on a difficult problem for evolution to explain, and you're given the answer, God of the gaps, understand that you've won the argument. This argument also indicates that evolution is viewed as a religion. A skeptic is accused of unbelief. If a plausible answer did exist, it will be given. Another response you might hear is the so-called argument from incredulity or argument from personal ignorance. This is similar to the God of the gaps argument except they can throw this at you if you're only trying to disprove evolution rather than prove intelligent design. For example, you argue that abiogenesis is impossible. And as evidence, you cite that laws of organic synthesis and improbability demonstrate that a single functional protein could not self-assemble, let alone a self-replicating cell. Now this cannot be refuted. Instead, you'll be accused of personal ignorance when everyone is ignorant in terms of plausible answers. Like the God of the gaps accusation, you're accused of a lack of faith in evolution. I recently posted a video documenting the impossibility of evolution through mathematical proofs. I showed this to several university professors of evolutionary biology. I also showed it to a PhD in mathematics who believes in evolution. No one even attempted to refute the claims. Two professors accused me of the God of the gaps fallacy, and the mathematician urged me to trust consensus opinions. They attempted to refute a mathematical challenge using the logic that I should reject mathematics and accept evolution on faith, faith that someone will eventually refute my arguments. This would require the overturning of irrefutable evidence, like proving that the binomial distribution formula doesn't apply to millions of years, or documentation that the research I cited on molecular convergences is faulty, or documentation of some materialistic principle that directs the appearance of specific mutations in different lineages. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. If any of you have any suggestions for topics, please email me or post them in the comments.